goodness. Listen, I have um, I have been praying and meditating, and this morning in my prayer, God really was ministering to my heart. I want to apologize for the absence of not uploading an episode, but here's one thing that I'm learning in my life as well. Number one, um, sometimes messages take time. Okay. Number two, I'm at this place in my life where I'm directed by God, not by self. I will no longer put myself in front of God. Um, The many times that I did, it was destruction. It was chaos. It wasn't for me. And every time that I let God lead me, God led me to some places that were awesome, great, and fruitful. I want to make mention of something that happened recently that really had me in a a, a sense of... um, Meditation. I prayed on it as well. I had a young lady who inboxed me um, and who also put it under my comments for whatever reason. I don't know if she felt that I wouldn't see it in my inbox. So she decided to put it um, under the video in the comment section. But I thought it was a little weird. Anyway, I saw the message first in my inbox and she said she was an avid listener and she felt like, you know, my messages were diverting into another place, basically. And that um, this call for God or Christianity or whatever place that I was being, it seemed to be temporary or whatever, because that was the trend or what people were doing. And so I sat on that message for a minute um, before I responded. And I immediately went into thinking deeply and clearly, God, how do I reply to this without it being emotional? So I said to her, um, basically, I'm a little disappointed that that was your comment. That's your thing. But also, to be perfectly clear, God has always been um, heavy in my life. God has always been something that I lean to. Studying the word has always been something that I grasp to. So I don't leave God out of my messages. But if you see this evolution of more God of God appearing in my life is because God asked me to spend more time with him and also to utilize the wisdom that he's giving me so that it could be told outwardly. And another thing that God showed me as well is that while I started my Instagram page and, and, and um, being on social media, I said to you. Many times before, those who are listening, I am a recluse and I'm also an introvert. And so God uses those who feel that they are not able, where they don't have an ability. My journey of healing was for myself. Saying it out loud on social media was for me. It wasn't for anybody else. I didn't know that it was going to turn into what it was. And that is the beauty in God that he uses a small vessel to tell a story. And while healing has its place, let's be honest, healing also comes with many emotions. And the first primary emotion that many people feel is the heaviness and the sadness that comes along with healing because it is tied to grief. And God said to me, while I need you to impart and still bring messages of healing, I also need there to be a segue and an aftermath and a resolution with happiness and joy and also letting people know that they can still live their life with meaning, not being dragged and consumed by the emotions that healing can be in the partaking in the beginning. And so my response to the young lady and also recognizing with God's wisdom that she was a young lady, baby, I'm 42 years old. You know, I'm not as old as some people, but I'm not as young as others. But I have been in situations that have aged me very well, that have seasoned me very well. And if it had not been for those situations, baby, I couldn't speak on it. When I say I know of many situations in life, I can speak on it. One thing about me is I don't put myself in situations that I know nothing about. And I won't put my mouth on nothing that I can't tell you about. So for me, and this is for anybody else, if you see a shift, baby, ain't nothing but God. And if you don't like it, listen, respectfully, I respect your decision But I also respect me and I'm moving in a way in which God says, go. When I listen to God the time before, 
everything unfolded the way that it needed to be. So I wanted to make that message known because in life we evolve. We cannot stay the same. You can't be the same person that you were 10 years ago. People get comfortable when you are one way because see you're predictable. Mm -mm. God say, I don't want you to be predictable. I want to lead you so that when I show you, People won't know how you come in. And that's the blessing in disguise. I want to share this message because it came to me in prayer and meditation this morning. And this is for any and everybody who is really going through situations where they're holding on to people too tight. Oh, goodness. And this used to be my story. This used to be my story with people. This used to be my story with family members. Uh, and as I shared as well, my connection to people made me feel whole that I was doing something right, that I was not allowing people to let go. But after I looked at it and analyzed it and after God showed me myself as well, I realized that my holding on to people was because of my insecurities and deficits. Okay? For you, my baby, I pray you find the strength to release your grip on people and circumstances that no longer serve your growth. Holding on tightly, not because of love, but because of fear, control, or unresolved insecurities only stifles the space that you needed to truly heal. People are not lifelines for your emotional wounds, nor are they tools to fix what's broken inside. It's hard to admit, but sometimes we hold on not out of love, but out of pride, fear, or abandonment, or just a deep need to manage what feels chaotic within us. If the idea of letting someone go feels like losing control, then this message is for you. There is a difference between love and attachment, and the two can often get tangled. Attachment demands possession, while love thrives in freedom. When you try to control how others show up for you or cling to relationships for validation, you're not giving people the space to choose you freely. You're not giving yourself the space to breathe, grow, and evolve. People cannot be our emotional crutches. They cannot fill voids that only self-reflection and healing can mend. If you find yourself forcing connections or refusing to release people because of what you think they owe you, ask yourself, is this really love or is this fear disguised as love? And then let me tell you something. <laughs> Letting go does not mean that you lose. I'll repeat that again. Letting go does not mean that you lose. It means you release what was never truly yours to control in the first place. It means you make peace with the reality that people have their own journey separate from ours or yours. And sometimes they walk away, not because you are unworthy, but because their chapter in your story has come to an end. When you cling to them in the past season, you did not only hold them back, you hold yourself back. You halt your own progress, robbing yourself of new opportunities, new relationships, and the chance to rediscover who you are without them. Baby, it's time to stop grasping at relationships like they are the glue of holding you together. That's too much weight for any one person to bear and unfair to make anyone the source of your completeness. I need to say that again. Mm. First of all, there's too much weight to bear for any person, right? And it's unfair to make anyone the source of your completeness. Sit on that and resonate with that, okay? Instead, I want you to turn inward. Embrace the discomfort of standing on your own without needing someone to fill in your gaps. Take accountability for the areas in your life that need work. And rather than blaming others for leaving or disappointing you, reflect on how you can better show up for you. You may find that the love and validation you've been chasing were inside you all along waiting for you to be noticed. When you stop trying to control people, when you let them go with love instead of bitterness, you free yourself. Free yourself from resentment, from disappointment, from the need of approval to prove your worth through the presence of others. It's in that freedom that you'll learn the real power of self-love and you'll discover that people will still come to you, not because you demanded their loyalty, but because they are drawn to the light of someone who is whole on their own. And I'm going to tell you something, this, this journey ain't going to be easy. 
It takes time to unlearn the habits of holding on too tightly, the instinct to wrap yourself in self-worth around other people's choices. But every time you release a person, expectation or relationship that no longer aligns with who you are becoming, you become closer to your own peace. And in that peace, you will find that your worth was never tied to who stayed or who left. It was always yours, my baby. So I pray that you learn to release, not from a place of anger, not from a place of pride, but from a place of love and trust. Trust that what's meant for you will stay and what isn't will make space for something better. Trust that letting go isn't a sign of weakness. It's a bold act of faith in yourself and your future. And as you release others from your grasp, you'll begin to realize that you are never losing anything, just making room for something greater. (laughs) And when the silence settles, after the release, don't rush to fill it. Sit with it. There is power in learning how to sit with yourself without distraction or escape. In the absence of what you clung to, you will come face to face with emotions that you avoided. Loneliness, fear, even your grief. But these moments are sacred. They are where transformation begins. They will teach you that your worth is not tied to your connections, but in your ability to stand firm, even when there's no one applauding, no one affirming, and no one watching. There is beauty in trusting the flow of life. Not everyone would stay and that's okay. People are meant to be experienced, not possessed. I'm going to say that again. People are meant to be experienced, not possessed. Every person that walks in and out of your life is a mirror reflecting parts of yourself. Some that need to be nurtured, some that need to be healed, and some that need to be released. Learn to appreciate these reflections for what they are without trying to make them stay longer than they are meant to. Growth happens when you embrace the rhythm of coming and going, holding and releasing. The truth is people will disappoint you. Not everyone will meet your expectations and not everyone will walk the same path that you do. But those moments of disappointment are not meant to harden your heart. They are invitations to learn grace, both for yourself and for others. Letting go with grace means not assigning blame or building walls. It means releasing the need for things to be anything other than what they are. It means honoring the lessons people bring even when those lessons come wrapped in pain. And once you begin to live from the place of freedom, you'll notice that relationships start to feel lighter. You'll no longer demand that others show up perfectly to earn a place in your life. Instead, you'll embrace relationships as fluid experiences full of ebbs and flows. You'll attract people who resonate with your peace and are not drawn to your need of control. Love will begin to feel less like a possession and more like a partnership or an exchange of energy, not a battle for ownership. So my baby, I pray that you become a person who can love fully without attachment, a person who can let go without bitterness, a person who understands that true freedom lies in trusting the process of allowing life to unfold as it should. When you surrender your grip on people and outcomes, you find that what is truly yours will never require force to remain. You are already whole, and the love you are searching for has been within you all along, waiting for you to release everything that may block your way. I want us to get out of this idea that we have to possess people, that we have to hold them tightly, that we have to grip firmly in order for them to be in our lives in order for us to feel whole. You are whole right by yourself. Let others flee. Let others go. Let others have their own journey. When we are connected so deeply to someone else that we find ourselves not able to think clearly or move in a forward direction, that is when a person becomes your God. Mm. And God showed me that in prayer. God wants us to be equal, not putting one before the other. If you feel like you have to possess a person, mm, there's an insecurity and a deficit that needs to be worked out. Because when you hold a person tight, you don't allow them to be their free selves. And in that, you don't get the beauty of who a person is. You lock them into the expectations 
that you want. And it's almost robotic in nature. It's not fluent. It's not fluid. It's not in fluidity. (laughs) It doesn't serve a purpose. It just establishes that you can control somebody else. And how unhappy is that? I pray that this, um, I pray this episode did someone some good. I hope that it penetrated your heart. If you are in a place where you are afraid to let someone go, whether that be friendship, whether that be relationship, whether that be a connection in family ships, please allow people to have their own journey. You cannot micromanage people's lives. You cannot put your expectations on other people. You cannot get upset because they didn't follow through. People are their own individuals and they have their own places to go and they have their own things to see. Let's work on us, okay? With love, with love, with love, y'all. Love and energy and embodying the freedom to be ourselves. I pray this message was wholeheartedly what you needed. All right? All right, bye-bye.